So I'm here today to bring you some science fiction fantasy reviews, talking about books I've been reading recently. And in this video, I'm going to be discussing the question of whether or not there is an author's responsibility to give a reader a certain type of ending. And don't worry, before you click off, know that I always keep my videos very spoiler free. So I'm going to be talking about vague generalities, talking about a few book endings that didn't meet my expectations, but I'm not going to be discussing details because that would be horribly wrong and unfair to those of you that haven't read the books yet. All that being said, let's Let's get started. First, let's talk science fiction starting with Paradise One by David Wellington. This is a book that I received for review from the publisher and this is one that I know a lot of you have been dying to hear my thoughts on. This is a space horror book which happens to be one of my favorite subgenres. and in this story we follow a group of investigators that are going off to find out what happened to this colony called Paradise One that has possibly gone silent on them and again this book has elements of horror and science fiction so I could have put this in either my stabby video or this one here, but because it does have a heavy influence of science fiction, I thought it was most appropriate here. But just be aware that it definitely leans into those horror aspects, so both genres are present. So this book had an amazing start. The first maybe five or ten percent of it, I was completely in love with it. I'll be honest, I was penciling it into my favorite books of the year list and was really excited. It starts out with a chase, there is a possible serial killer tracking them down. It just hit all of my buzzwords and I was just really into it. However, the book just started with a bang and then never stopped and I don't mean that in a good way. Basically this book just goes so fast at full top speed to the point that I felt like it sacrificed a lot of character development and really made it hard to appreciate the nuances that the author was hopefully trying to weave into the story. Instead, it just moves and moves and moves. And this book is very long. It does have, again, fast pacing. So if that's a concern for you how long the book is, you will move through it quickly. But it turned out to be a very unsatisfying read, at least for me. One thing that I do want to mention is that I tend to prefer science fiction horror that is more suspenseful. And this one, again, it moves so quickly that I never got a chance to be creeped out. It never felt atmospheric. Instead, it felt like an action story, which is not my favorite kind of space horror. So just keep that in mind if you prefer that. If you love action-based narratives, maybe this one will work better for you. So overall, I liked the setup of this one, but as the story continued, I'll be honest that my feelings towards it definitely went downhill. And that's where I need to talk about the ending. So with Without spoiling anything, but I do think you have the right to know as a potential reader that this book ends in a major cliffhanger. And when I mean cliffhanger, I don't mean that there is a possibility of more books to come. I mean that there basically could have been a character hanging off the edge of a cliff. This book is so unfinished in my mind that it was very frustrating when I spent over 700 pages getting there just to find no conclusion. It gave me the experience of if you're watching a movie and your mom just like turns off the TV on you and tells you to go to bed. I felt like I watched half of a space horror movie and I never got to see the other half. Arguably there is, I assume, more books to come, but at the time of recording this video, at least on Goodreads, it's not advertised as a series, so I do want to make that known. This is a series and this book does not not work as a standalone, which really surprises me. Most of the time when I read series books, even if it's obvious that there's more books to follow, usually the authors do a good job of giving the book a resting point and a little bit of a completion feeling so that even if you didn't continue on, you felt like you read a complete story, even if you can clearly see that there's other books to continue on with. And that was not the case here. It felt so unsatisfying that it really did drop my review and opinions on this book. And I do need to warn you because had I known that, I don't know if I would have wanted to push through this entire book had I known I was gonna get that ending. So I'm really frustrated, I'll be honest. Then for some backlist science fiction, I wanna talk about Reem D by Neil Stevenson. And this is a story that follows a man who has done some drug laundering and so has all of this money that he has to deal with. And then within the story, he becomes addicted to this online multi player game and so he gets the idea to use the game as a way to help launder his money through the system. And then the story spirals from there. I am a huge fan of Neil Stevenson. He is easily in my top 10 favorite SFF authors. I do need to make that list and video eventually. I'm just not ready to do that today. But definitely he would be there. That being said, I would put Reem D at the very bottom of his list of books that I've read so far. I appreciate this book. I thought that it was a good book for a thriller, but for Neil Stevenson, I thought it was one of his worst. I definitely found myself bored at different places. It's very long, and while in other books of his, like Anna 
Tatiam, I was happy to spend hours and hours reading this book. This one really didn't feel entirely worth my time. I'm not sure if I'm going to continue on with the rest of the series because there is a second book which I've heard is also not so great and I'll be honest I'm kind of let down. So I would pretty much only recommend this to fans like myself that just want to read his entire work and hopefully one day maybe I'll do a ranking video on them but if you are just getting into Neil Stevenson this is definitely not where I'd recommend starting. I found it to be one of his weakest books and definitely it had moments where I was geeking out with him. He's a really interesting author how he brings in all of his knowledge and experience and background and ties in really cool ideas and makes interesting connections. But those moments were too far and few between the generic thriller plot for me to really enjoy this one. So I'm horribly disappointed. I liked it, but no, I didn't love it. Next, let's talk about Embassy Town by Chana Mievel. This is a book that follows a far flung future where humans have colonized this planet. On this planet there are those that are native to it, so the local aliens, and these aliens have a really unique language structure. The story specifically follows a young person who has grown up on the colony, they've moved away and are now coming back, and they have a lot of experience dealing with the communication with these aliens, which is again incredibly unique. This is a story where I found the language aspects to the narrative completely compelling. I was fascinated by them. I thought it was really, again, unique is the word I want to use over and over again for a reason because I've never read one quite like that. It definitely gave me small vibes of Arrival, if you love that story that was turned into the iconic movie. And I like pieces of this one, but I'll be honest, outside of the language aspects, this was not my favorite China Mieville. I found the story to be not that interesting, even though things eventually started to progress. I think that China Mieville has really cool ideas, but I don't think he's my favorite storyteller. But he's an author that I keep trying again and again, as we'll get into in this video, because I want to love him so much and I want to spend time with his characters and their ideas. Even if his books don't work perfectly for me, I still want to experience so. Now switching over to fantasy, I want to talk about Rat King, also by Chana Mievel. This is a re-release that is done by Tor Essentials, who sent me the copy. And this is an older book that I'd never heard of before by this author, despite him being very prolific. In this story, we follow a young man whose father has been murdered by some kind of entity, and the blame is placed on his son. He goes to prison. However, someone comes to break him out, and that is King Rat. And so within the story. This is set in a alternative London and the story spirals from there. This is a story I loved for the atmosphere. I thought that the city setting was wonderful. I do think that China Mieville has a talent for writing really interesting urban settings. Definitely gave me vibes to Bernita Street Station, which I do admit I thought did it better. But definitely if that is your reason to read his work, I think you'll be really pleased with this one as well. I think it's most similar to Bernadette Street Station. And just as again, weird, different, and just again, one that was totally off my radar. Not my favorite of his work, but definitely an enjoyable ride. One that I'm so grateful to read because again, it was not in any of my library systems, which is my favorite thing about Tor Essentials is that they keep resurrecting books that are so hard to get your hands on unless you want to spend an arm and a leg for a used copy. So definitely glad I got to check this one out. And if you're sensing a pattern, yes, I then went on to read The Scar by China Mieville. This is a companion story set in the same world as Perdita Street Station, but you definitely can read it as a standalone if you want to, but there are a few things that are mentioned here that are first explored in the book one, so really I do recommend starting there, but you could read this one if you really only want to read this one, don't care about the first book. In the story, it is set on a barge or a ship that is transporting slaves, and these slaves are very grotesque because they have been remade in this new form, and within the story there are other travelers on the ship. We follow this linguist who gets pulled in to do some work for the captain, and there are just layers and layers to the story. Despite my small mass maker paperback, this is actually a very long book. It's very dense and there are sea creatures they come across. There's ties back again to the first book and there is so much happening. I very much appreciated what was happening. I thought the atmosphere was fantastic. If you love seafaring books, I think you'll be very satisfied with that. Definitely it makes me want to read more within that kind of subgenre of fantasy. And again, it was unique and grotesque and the character interactions were really interesting. But I will be fully honest that my love for this book 
wavered between different sections. Sometimes I was really invested in it and other times not so much. Again, this book is long and I think I am someone who does tend to prefer shorter narratives. I think I would love for Chan to be able to write some novellas. Perhaps he has it and I'm just unaware. But I love his ideas in his books. But I do find the way he writes, which is very drawn out, just can be a bit exhaustive at times. So you can tell that I'm very conflicted how I feel about this book. I still haven't actually rated it at the time I'm recording this video. I liked it a lot. I might revisit it in the future, but it's not a book I completely love. So do what you will with that review and try it out for yourself if it sounds up your alley. And finally, I want to talk about The Bone Shard War by Andrew Stewart. This is book three and the final book in the Drowned Empire trilogy. And this is a book that I received for review from Orbit. And this is one, again, that's a final book in the series, but don't worry, I will not be spoiling this specific one. If you do want to read the series, you want to start back at the beginning with The Bone Shard Daughter, which is one of my favorite epic fantasy debuts. I love that book. In the beginning of that that book we follow a young girl who is a daughter of the emperor. She has lost her memory and is trying to get it back. And you also follow the perspective of a smuggler who is looking for his wife who has disappeared. There's also an issue that perhaps something is happening in the landmass, hence the title of the series. And then we also have this incredibly cool magic system which is very dark in its nature where the shards of the citizens of the land are used to create these constructs and then they are programmed with certain instructions. And so I love the setup of the series. The first book is one of my favorites. I've read it now three times and adore it. I do recommend it. However, and I'm gonna say this in a way that will not spoil any of the books per se, but I would argue that the first book works too well as a standalone. Perhaps the author was not entirely sure if they would get a full three book deal when they made their book selling contract. But the ending is so satisfying that when I went on to the later two books, I felt like they were somewhat unnecessary, which is really brutal to say. So I have read book two, of course, before reading this, and there is a focus on a romance plot I did not love, and there's just a lot of the miscommunication trope, which I found very frustrating because the story is told in multiple perspectives. So we, as the reader, understand that everyone's motivations are good, and it's very then frustrating to watch the characters make those mistakes. This third book, I was definitely hoping would return to the roots of the first book, which again, I absolutely love. I would not have requested to review this book if I didn't think I was gonna love it or hope to. But this third book really follows suit with the second, so if you like the second book, most likely you will feel the same about the third. However, I felt that this book, once again, had a very high relationship focus to the point that I felt the intimate relationship was more important than the crisis that was happening across the land, the political maneuvering, and it just felt very frustrating that the characters were looking at something as petty and small as their individual romance. And also within this book, again, the ending of this one I found to be unsatisfying because of how the first book ends. And that's all I can say without spoiling it. But while Paradise One, in my opinion, ended the book on such a cliffhanger, I almost feel like the Bone Shard Daughter did too good of a job giving a complete ending. That's all I can say without spoilers. If you want more, I can let you know in a DM. But basically, I like this one. I did still enjoy spending time with the characters. I love certain perspectives and all of that. But this one was definitely not the banger ending I was looking for. It was fine but kind of a letdown. So that's it for this video here. I'd love to know of the books I talked about. Which ones are you planning on checking out for yourself? And I'd love to know as well your opinion. Are authors required to give readers certain types of endings? Are cliffhangers okay? Keep it all spoiler free, but I'd love to hear more of your thoughts on what is a reader entitled to in terms of an ending. So if you're new to my channel, I do read a lot of horror thriller science fiction fantasy. If you want to stick around and subscribe, if you want to help me out with this video here, I appreciate a thumbs up. Up. If you want to drop a comment, even if it's just a stack of books or a spaceship, all of that is great. And if you want to hit that little notification bell, that way you'll never miss a video from me. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.